Here they are. Here we go. Page 287. I'm living in Canyon now. Praise the Lord.
don't forget this, and if uh, you get a chance and want to, I know they'd love to have you, so uh, go out and support this if uh, if you want to, amen, and uh, you know, I know they appreciate having you come, I know some are thinking about going from here, so uh, we do want to remember them, lift them up in prayer today, amen. Just pray that they have a wonderful homecoming. Amen. Praise the Lord as we get ready. Uh, Sunday school, I guess the kids already went. Just move on. Let her make her way up. Give her a hand clap. Amen. Just praise the Lord this morning. Amen. That monitor definitely got to be turned down a little bit. Right? I turned it down a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I turned it down. I turn it up. I've been bumping it up right. He never changed. Praise God, he don't change. Amen. We'd be in bad shape if he changed. It's a little loud. The devil don't change either. It's bad. But God's good all the time, right? All the time. Yes, he is. Hey, let's exalt him this morning. Yes. God yes. is good. God is good. Let's give God a praise. Praise the Lord. Hey, if we don't praise him, what's going to happen? And God's still going to cry out in our stead. Yep. You know, God loves us. He loves our praise. Yeah. And when we exalt him, he's going to cry out in our stead. Yep. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Even though we don't praise him sometimes. Because we feel so bad, we can't. Yep. But you know what? We need to praise him in the good times, in the bad times, as well as the good. But Amen. It's kind of hard to do that. Sister Elaine, I'm going to ask you to say the blessing. You want to say the blessing? Okay. Okay. Father oh, God, we just thank you for the privilege of coming to church today. Lord, we hope you'll. Put your blessing on Sister LeBar. Help her to teach what we need to hear. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, uh, God was giving me two or three places, but we're going to go to First Kings. Where? First Kings. First Kings. Kings. Uh -huh. The 18th chapter. And then we're going to go a little bit in Isaiah. And what God, you know, we don't know what God's got this morning, but God, God's got it all planned out. Yeah, he does. He's got it all planned out. And he knows what you need, he knows what I need, and he is a good God, and he's going to He's gonna let us receive from him today. Let's receive from the table of God today, because, you know, his word is so precious this morning. Let's go to 18 and 31. That old Elijah. A lot of people know about Elijah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, and to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with his stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as great as could, would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in, in order and cut the burlock in pieces. And laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Now we're going to find out here who's God, right? Mm-hmm. We're going to find out who's God. And he said, do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar. And he filled the trench also with water. Now he didn't use the oval. He didn't use gasoline. He didn't use none of that. He used water. Because mm -hmm. he was fixing to prove what God could do. And it came
came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, Israel's name, it was Jacob, but his name was, God changed his name to Israel. Let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and thou hast turned their back, heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell. Now it took the fire of the Lord, didn't it? It took, the, it took God's fire to, to do this because what was filled in the trench? Water. So the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the earth sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water and was in the trench. Now, now he, it, God don't do second hand, do nothing second hand. Amen. Look at what God did there. The, it, it burnt the wood, the stones, the dust, and even licked the water up. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, He is the Lord God. Yes. The Lord, He is the God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon, and slew them there. Now, uh, here, Baal was false, a false that, he was a false prophet, right? Mm -hmm. And all these people, they worship. Some people worship Baal back in them days. And what are they worshiping today? No less than Baal. Pretty much. I mean, yeah. may not be a stone. He could be a car. Well, people, it goes on the lake in the morning and day and today. On the, you know, instead of serving God. Now, I'm not saying that you can't serve God at home. I'm not saying that at all. <coughs> But, you know, God made his house to be into, didn't he? To come together with people and worship the Lord. But only Elijah did all this, all these uh, wonderful, marvelous things in the name of the Lord, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And what happened to him then? He went out, and Jezebel was coming after him. Mm -hmm. And when he went out, he hid under a Jupiter tree. <clears throat> and that's what, that's sometimes what we do. God can do things in our life, and, and, and uh, it looks like a, it's never ending. Then all of a sudden something happens, and we go hide ourselves. We get fearful, don't we? Uh -huh. We get fearful of what man can do. We get fearful of what, uh, well, no, this woman, she was just a woman. Jezebel, evil, evil woman. But he, he got afraid of her. So we're going to go. Is anybody got anything to say right now? I just want to say that after after uh, after Elijah saw what God had did there on the mount there, he just knew that Ahab and Jezebel were going to be shaking in their shoes. And they should have been. I mean, they should have been. But you start the top of the next chapter, you'll see what happened. That didn't work out that way. And, right. and, and it didn't work out the way Elijah thought it was. Now why Elijah didn't walk in there and call fire down from heaven on them, I'll never know. He ran. But he did. Yeah. But, but uh, uh, that just tells you that some people, even though they believe in God, don't want no part of it. And Jez Jezebel still... Till the day she died, thought her God was stronger than, than Yahweh. And that's what, and she just knew that her God was going to destroy Elijah. It worked out the other way around. But we need more boldness. You know, yeah. Yeah. Elijah showed boldness, but then he ran. I'm not going to run from nobody. I mean, if, it, if it costs my head, it's just going to cost my head. But God said he wouldn't let anybody harm a hair on our head if we stood in his name. So, but 
I think it would have turned out different if he had done that. He could have took care of that. But like I said, he ran off. He just after after he saw that she wasn't going to back down, then he started to fear for his life. After what God had already done, I saw it right there in front. Of him. It, 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 I don't know. I might have done the same thing. I don't know. But, I don't know. but God has proved Himself to us so many times. You know, we get fearful and we try to, you know, hide. The devil is what you know. It's a, it's too. Three, I guess it's three kinds of fears. One is from the devil, one is from the Lord, and the other one is yourself. And, uh, you know, when we let self get in our way, the devil can use that. And, and But he has a hay day at it. He has a hay day. Because whenever, he, whenever we, we imagine something, the devil can make it bigger in your mind. And when he does that, then, you know, what do we do? We get so fearful that we can hide ourselves. Yeah. And God is ready to deliver. But, it, you know, we got to come to him to, for him to do it. But you know what? God's a God. He can do anything, yeah. no matter what. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even after this, the Lord showed Elijah he, he even fed him with raisins. And he, and you know, and, and water, he went that rule again, water, and he got water. But you know what? Then he dried up, didn't he? But then, but God has always got something or somebody to help you. It don't matter. He's always got somebody. Yep. Or some, some way or another, God will bring you through. This past week, I'm going to tell y'all, God worked a miracle in my life. In more than one occasion, uh, I was down to my last dollar, and and I, I said I don't know how I'm getting gas to go to church up. Bless your Lord. Hard up, but you know what? God provided. That's the kind of God we serve. I said, well, I, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do, but God made a way that I, he, he gave me $5 to get some gas to you. I had a dollar left over. I went and got me a hamburger and that dollars. But I tell you what, God has never let me down when he would keep me. He's never, ever. And sometimes I get fearful because I don't know where the next end's going, where, how I'm going to make it. Because you know, I'm not up here to beg for nobody for no money. And I don't want, you know, if they can't give it to me free hearty, I don't want it. But, but what I'm saying, if people, if people would, I mean, you know, if, if, if I ask, but I don't want to ask. Bless your I don't. But God made a way. I'm telling you, He made a way. Where there seems like no way, God makes a way. I'm going to tell you, he's never, ever, right. ever, ever let me die. Amen. I've seen his hand in my life so many times. Yes. But like I say, sometimes I get I get a little fearful. But then I go to the Lord and I start praying. I say, Lord, I don't know if I'm going to die. Yes. And uh, so that, and that was one. And then the other was uh, my health. Sometimes my health gets... You know, I get weak, I get things. But you know what? God said he was my healer. Yeah. And I tell the devil, I told him, I said, you get yeah. behind me, Satan. You get behind me. I do yeah. not belong to you. I belong to God. If yeah. God wants to take me home, I go. Yeah. But if he don't, You're I'm still God's here. Answer. I will serve him. And uh, But we can go over here in Isaiah. If anybody's got anything to say about uh, Elijah. Elijah was a great man. We know that because God took him. He took him in a chariot, didn't he? I mean, yeah, he did. One day he's going to come back. God's going to bring him back. But right now, he's up there. Now, some people say it's going to be Moses and Enoch. And some people say it's going to be Elijah and Enoch. So I don't know. I don't get that bad. Does it? God's got, he's got his two prophets anyway at the end. Yeah, we'll know when he shows up, when they show I, up. We'll know when they show up. That's right. <laughs> if we're here. <laughs> I, I expect we're going to be God here. God is so good, I'm telling you. Amen. 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 Am
never, ever, he will ever, ever let you die. If you hold on to God, he will never, ever let you die. And I tell you what, what else have we got? Look at the economy. They talk about shutting it down. It's it's mine. It's coming kind of mine. Hey, it's going to get down. We're going to have to trust God. But you know what? He's the best thing. He's the best thing. That's all we need. It's all we need. You can't depend on your money. You can't depend on a people. You can't depend on the government. You can't depend on who, what else. You have to depend on God. Amen. Yeah, I've seen it done. Yep. And I forgot what what verse. Oh yeah. It's the 40, 41st chapter and the 10th verse. It says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. How many times have we had to stand on that right there? How many times have I had to stand on that? You know yeah. what? If you're standing on God's word, it will fail you. Amen. Never, ever will it fail Amen. you. And it says, For I am thy God, I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were <coughs> incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. And it goes on down to the 13th verse, and it says, For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Yes. Now how many times, how many times have I went to that verse and said, Lord, help me, help me. Yes. I'm at the end of my road. And I, I'm just holding on, but he always come on the same time. Anybody got anything to say about that? I'd like to hear y'all's comments on stuff. Bless the Lord. How many times has the Lord had y'all for stuff? How many times? Uh, I'm, I'm 71 years old, and I know some of y'all are younger than me. Some are older. But... Anybody like to say what the Lord's done for him this morning? What has he brought you from? Just fine, I would. I, I can remember he was talking about this in his verse. When I was taking care of my aunt and uncle, you know, we had a hard time at the hospital because they was rejecting and taking him. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I just asked the Lord, I said, Lord, you can answer as fast as I can flip a finger. And he wasn't no time. The lady came in there and says, well, we're going to take him in. You know, that was God, because we was having a real rough time at that time. And all I have to do is just go to God. I mean, any problems you have, He'll take care of them. Right. And just like yesterday, David called me, and he was sort of, he was a little bit. I said, oh, Lord, don't let him come home now. <laughs> and when he came home, he was just, praise God. God. <laughs> I just thank God. Praise God. Praise God. On the most small things that concerns you, concerns him. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> It just pays to wait on the Lord, you know. It pays to pray, and, and I was sitting there thinking about this is a materialistic thing, but you know, God works in the materialistics, and He knows best in those things too. But you know, as we was praying Friday for Derek, you know, Derek's been looking for months now, or ever since he had a wreck for a truck, and uh, just wait, waiting on God, I couldn't seem to find it. And you know, we prayed Friday, and we asked God to to find, you know, show Him the right truck, and. He was on his way. It was after prayer meeting that, he, that the Lord showed him this truck. And uh, this just blows my mind what I'm about to tell you about this truck. Okay. And everybody's seen the black truck out front, right? Yeah. I mean, very nice truck. That very nice. And um, Derek had was going to a, a, a job site and uh, had seen a car lot or something and was looking in that car, seen a truck over there or something and had seen it before or something. I don't know. I might be telling Is that right? You've seen it before. There was a truck there. and. This truck wasn't in a car lot. It was across the road on a hill. And things that imagination that exalt themselves against the Word of God. We need to realize that if it's not the Word of God, and it ain't lining up with the Word of God, then what is it? It's the right. enemy. We've got, to, got to cast it down, let it go, let God deal with it. But a lot of times we won't. We'll take and we'll run from it and not let God deal with it. Yep. Because it ain't in our, in our timing. We, you know, I heard, 
I don't know if it was Jensen Franklin this morning who was preaching on praising, praising God. I just love that because I think we need to praise God. But, you know, um, we get in a hurry when God is saying, hang on, I'm taking care of it. It was Jeremiah. That's who it was. And, and you know, when God's taking care of the things, but we, we fret and get fearful because we think, I mean, we're serving God. He's not dead. He's alive. If we could just get that in our spirit, God, you're not dead, and this is all in your power. We don't have to worry and fret over anything. That's right. I mean, what's going to happen is going to happen. When I was a kid, I used to say my motto before I ever was in church used to be, why well, worry about it? Because worry never could change it. You know what worrying does? It stresses you out. It takes you further than you want to go. It puts fear in you. It cripples you. It binds you. It ties you up. It chains you down. You know, God don't want us to be that way. He wants us to be able to walk in peace and, and to know that it's in His time. And like you said, He makes a way when there seems to be no way. I've been praying about some things and I couldn't understand. I was getting impatient. I mean, I said, God, please help me. I know that you must be working patience in me, Lord, because I'm just really wanting this answer quick. I mean, I wanted it quick. And, and usually God gives me answers quick, but this answer... Was it coming quick? And I began, old devil began to plant things in my mind and tell me things that, that wasn't even true. And I'd have to fight more with him and cast them back behind me and, and, and not think upon those things, but think upon the things of, okay, there's something going on. And it's something that, that, you know, you don't know what someone else is going through. You don't know what they're dealing with. But as I began to cast them things back and not let the devil torment my mind with them, God moved. He moved and gave me an answer. Well, he had an answer, but still it's better than... Waiting whenever, you know, you know, God is trying to teach us patience. we got to have patience to serve the Lord. And patience is a virtue. I'm telling you, patience is is uh, something we all got to have. We all got to have patience. But I'm telling you, that was, it was wearing my patience thing. <laughs> but I thank God that through it, you know, we go through things yeah. to grow and to learn. And God teaches us. Just about time you start to give up. God comes, comes up along. And say, I mean, you hold on to him, and you hold on, and you think, oh, mercy, mercy, I'm getting so up weak, I cannot yeah. handle it no more. Then God shows his hand. He shows does. up. Doesn't he? Every time. He shows up. But Johnny, what about that? He showed up for you, didn't he? Yes. Amen. Praise God. Last Sunday, a couple of people had me come up to the altar to get prayer, thank God for that. And, all, and uh, Sister Sanders prophesying to me things the Lord was telling her to just to trust the Lord and God was going to take care of it and I wouldn't have to go to court but I wouldn't have to be there I wouldn't have to appear there of course tomorrow would have been today yeah but you know once you prayed for me and we we left well first thing Monday morning I got called and it was the lawyer and he was telling me he said was telling me, you know, get prepared for court this coming Monday. And I said, you mean we're going to court? And he said, yes. And I was under the impression I was only supposed to have to go one day. <laughs> the next thing I know, he's telling me, no, 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 you're going to have to be there for two weeks or at least until you give testimony. And I mean, I just went through the roof and I thought, well, what is this all about? I called Sister Sandra, and, well, Eric, I called Erica, yes. and, and she told Sister Sandra, and they began to pray. And, you know, I was kind of like, I lied to myself. I Bless him, Lord. I murder, you know? I mean, I we all got a little lie to him. Trust you. Amen. Know, but but I, this news that I heard, it devastated me. I mean, y'all just probably can't comprehend the devastation that I felt. But I thought, oh, Lord, what am I going to do? Three weeks without a paycheck? Nobody's going to pay me? And I'm going to have to show up before all this stuff? I mean, the things that was running through my mind, you wouldn't believe. I even told Sister Sandra, I said, well, you know what? I said, it's possible they might even try to put me in jail over this. And she said, we're not accepting that. No, we're not going to, I'm not right. hearing that. God ain't going to let that happen. But, you know, uh, they begin to pray. And I don't know if they call other people or not. I, I believe Sister Reed and them was praying to us and But anyway, you know, about three hours, less than three hours, I guess, I got a phone call. And it was my heart. It was a large man. Thank you, Jesus. And after the lawyer gave me the news, I called Sister Sandra. It's the devil, and he will flee from you. That's right. Then the devil comes to steal, kill, yeah, destroy, and yeah. just torment you. Yeah. Torment you. And, but God, if we submit ourselves, you know, Jesus had to do it. Jesus submitted himself yes, to God. Did you know that? 
And we see Jesus when he would go and pr out and pray. What would you think he was doing then? He was submitting himself to God. And if Jesus has to do it, we ain't no better. That's right. Amen. We ain't no better. That's right. For I mean, sure. We should take a, 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 I don't know what the word is, a, a, we should look at <clears throat> Jesus and, and, and follow he, after him. He what has an example. Did, you know? He's our example. He said, draw nigh to God, and he would draw nigh to you. Amen. And cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So say we get double-minded. Right. We do. We get double-minded. And we, we, when we get like that, God can't do nothing. I mean, God doesn't <clears throat> us like that, does he? But I was going to read y'all something. My time's about gone. But y'all, uh, anybody else? Can make you only God, only God can make you happy that your right. that, that your son got three years in prison. Only God can do that. Yeah. God, it could have been a lot more. Amen. Yeah. You know, uh, anybody else? I was praying Friday. <sighs> or Saturday. 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 Saturday.
I didn't know how this was going to go this morning, but, you know, Lord just takes over. I mean, you know, I could stand up here all day, and it could be just, I, I don't know what to do, but God knows. He knows your needs. He knows your life. He knows everything about you. And I was going to read this. Brother Derek, you got something to say? No, I'm good. Something quiet, sitting on Sister Elaine? Okay. Uh, I got this from uh, Brother Wilkerson's son. He's taking on, I guess y'all would receive these too, but something, I was reading this and it, it was just wonderful. It says, The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forward and even forevermore. That's in Psalms. 121, 7 and 8. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. Amen. Uh, 145 and 20, and it says, uh, then it up here it says, Listen again to his word to you. He preserveth the souls of the saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. And that's in Psalms 97 and 10. And it says, he's not going to let the devil overtake you as an easy prey. Instead, he's going to empower you to put your foot on the enemy's neck. God himself will deliver you fully. And that's his word. Amen. 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 y'all pray for me? Because I really desire your prayers. Amen. Keep on going, keep on trucking, Henry. <laughs> Praise the Lord.